people look at you, say things to you, make you begin to feel all this inferiority, all of this, all these, these feelings of maybe I'm not that, maybe I'm not a good father, maybe I'm not a good pastor, maybe I'm not a good mother, maybe I'm not a good this, and then you will begin to compromise who you are for real because he wants to take advantage of that. Now, if you think that all it was, you too holy for that, he went to Jesus and says, if thou be the son of God, turn these stones into bread. Now, you know if he challenges Jesus' authority, what do you think he's going to do with yours? The devil's number one assignment is to use his influence to steal the identity of you, God's creation. The devil, Satan in his, is his name, is real. He wants to convince you that he is not who the Bible says he is. Right, right. And now he has a new one. He wants to convince you that he does not even exist. People are now saying there's not even a real devil. The devil is a liar. The devil is real. Amen. Hey, you know, when I went to my first trip to Jamaica, I just love Jamaica. You know, my, my friends, you know, who... I right, in high place, they just talk about me. Well, you ought to go here. You ought to go, listen, I just like Jamaica. Now, my wife, you know, she loves water everywhere. You know, we go to the East Coast. She in the water there, Virginia Beach and on down. We go to uh, Miami. Oh, I love Miami Beach. I think it's so beautiful. Yeah. But I don't get in the water in the East Coast. I don't get in the water in, in the, well, I, I sure don't get in these lakes. Y'all forget me, I'm a beautiful lake. Uh, <laughs> I don't get enough when I go to San Francisco or if I go to um, um, Virginia, uh, um, um, what's the beach in um, Venice Beach. I don't go in the water there. I don't get in the water unless I'm in the Caribbean in Jesus' name. And I splash. I stay close to the shore, though. Even when I went to Hawaii. I tell her, my Hawaiian sister, he's like, Pastor, you ought to get in there. I said, there's sharks in that water. She said, no, it ain't. The next day, they said, we found some sharks in the water. I said, I told you so. <laughs> but I was in, I was in the water in Jamaica. Come on, Trice. I was in the water in Jamaica, and all at once, me and they were sitting in there, and I was, you know, and I said, ow! Whoa! Something hit me. And they said, you know, it just was your, just your suit. I think it's your, I said, what? You know, I had my, sh my shirt on and my pants on. I'm holy when I get in the water. <laughs> had my shirt on and my pants on. I was like looking at, maybe I pinned it up. And I kept looking at you, I'm trying to see, it. you know, what is it? You know, and then they said, it ain't nothing, Larry. It's just, you just, you just thought. It was, I said, and they had to tell me, she said, I said, she said, no. So I said, okay. <laughs> ah! Man, it got messy. Ah, oh, something. And I was looking in the water. She said, Larry, it ain't nothing in here. It ain't, it ain't nothing in here. That's just, that's you. And then she said, ah! I said, we got to get up out of this water. <laughs> got out of the water and found out it was a, just some jelly. Like she said, and there was jellyfish in the water. I didn't know that. And them jellyfish wasn't. But see, she didn't believe it until she got stung. And that's people want to believe that all, the ones, all this mess is going on ain't the devil. Listen, the devil is real, Amen. And you can keep acting like he ain't the one that's stinging and he ain't the one that's clowning. See, that's what happened. I'm that Pastor Parker, you know, was, was sharing it with me. He said, you know, the thing about Job, I'll give him credit this one time. And after this, I preach. You can't get credit no more. But he said, you know, the problem with Job was that people, his friends were with him. And they, they looked and they knew about God. And they knew about all the other things that were going on. But what they didn't do was give the devil credit for what he was doing. And sometimes we give credit too much. Okay, you must be doing this. This must be happening. This is why this. We give too much credit of the bad things to God, and we don't step back to say, wait a minute, what is the devil doing? And his friends that were sitting next to him could only see God and him, but they weren't willing to see the devil. And you better open your eyes up to know that you're there and God is there, but the devil is somewhere too. And you better know it so you can cast that joker out. Amen? Amen. All right, the devil is wicked. He is evil. He is wickedly evil, inside and out. He personifies depravity, depra dep 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 depravity and all abominable things. There is no good in the devil at all. Come on, somebody said there is no good in the devil at all. 
I'm saying this because there's people out there trying to make it seem like the devil is all right. The devil is not all right, family. He does not have good days. The devil must be having a good day. He didn't mess with me. No, uh-uh. He didn't listen. He does not have good days. He's not going to get saved later. He ain't going to say, oh, you know what? <laughs> I want to be saved. Jesus Christ is Lord. Uh-uh. There was a preacher that came along and said that Jesus was going to go to the devil and apologize because all at once, of, because of the, um, the things that he said about the devil. Well-known preacher. The devil does not have good days and he is not going to get saved. He's not nice to his demons or to people who follow him. The devil is trying to kill you and everything and everyone else he comes in account encounter with. All the devil has ever done is mimic good, then diminish it, then destroy it. God's creation. The devil is the author of confusion, chaos, and crisis. Don't play with the devil. When we was young, we didn't know that. You know, we'd, be, we'd go to the mirror and we'd just say, Miss, they said, if you turn around three times, seven times in the mirror, you say, Mr. Every time I think it was Weatherby. It was, y'all had somebody else. Ours was Weather Weatherby. So we say, oh, Mr. Weather Weatherby. Mr. Weather Weatherby. They said, Mr. Weatherby would show up in the, in the mirror and say, ah! But we couldn't get to say, by the time we got to five, we would run, ah! I saw Mr. Mr. Weatherby. Don't play with the devil. Don't play with him in Ouija boards. Don't play with him. Listen here. Don't you mess with the devil. Not because we're scared of him. We don't want to fool with him because we know what he's about. Amen. Don't give him any place to stand or any place to rest. Pass is all right if we fight and argue sometime. That's just us. We'll be all right. We'll kiss and make up. No, don't give any place to the devil. James 3 and 16 says, For where envy and strife is, there is, every, there is confusion and every evil work. Are you with me, family? Yeah. Ephesians 4 and 27, what does it say? Read it real strong. Y'all ain't read it strong enough. What does it say? Lene's version says, yes, it says, give no opportunity to the devil. Don't give him any opportunity to come in and mess things up. When you see something happening, I'm going to get away from it. Because if you give opportunity to the devil, uh, there's a song that says, if you let him ride, he won't drive. That joker will run you into a ditch every time. He will redefine and re-identify a situation that you call fun and you just having a good time and somebody will leave hurt. He has one ending for all that he connects with and that is to see them wounded physically and spiritually dead. He brings machine guns to fist fights. He cannot see you win and when you do win, he hates you all the more. He doesn't say, oh, you got me this time. <laughs> uh-uh, he hates you all the more when you win. I'm talking about the devil, y'all. Recognize him in others, and then recognize him in yourself. He knows that your strength lies in you knowing and being what God created you to be. So if he can convince you through aggravations, weariness, deceit, oppression, depression, Inordinate desires, ambition, selfishness, ignorance, and frustration that you are not who God says you are. He can steal from you your ability to be what God created you to be. A person that does the supernatural, a person that does impossible things. And he will convince you to live a life existing as a partial self of the whole of what you are, which is a miserable life and is not life at all. Look down because that's where the devil is and say, not me, devil. Man, you got to get mad. You can't even, not me, devil. No, not me, devil. This is not going to happen in my home, devil. This is not going to happen in my house, devil. This is not going to happen in my finances, devil. This is not going to happen in my future, devil. You, you got to talk to the devil. I say, don't leave the devil alone. No, you better talk. Jesus says, hey, um, who are you? He was casting them demons out of me. Jesus, what, what's your name? 
My name is Legion, for we am okay. Now you, Legion, you got to get out of here. <laughs> Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Don't exchange your glorious life for his. The devil is a jerk. All the disobedience and evil and wickedness that you are involved in right now, stop it. Because that is not your identity. That is the identity of the devil. Say, that is not my identity. Say, disobedience, evil, and wickedness is not my identity. That is the identity of the devil. You are a child of royalty, a son and daughter of promise. You are a friend of God, an heir to a godly inheritance. You are a mover and a shaker in the kingdom. You are a reconciler and a purpose reviver. You are a passionate prayer warrior with the ability to preach, a repair of broken walls and a restorer of the streets. Shout, I am. You are the clearing call of the righteous one, the express will of the Father of, on this earth, of the, the Holy Spirit and the Son. You are a demon-chasing, devil-rebuking, overcoming, mountain-moving child of the King, and no weapon that is formed against you will prosper. So throw your head back, check your nails, you're going to heaven and you ain't going to hell. All things were placed under your feet of the resurrected Messiah, Jesus Christ, and in that name every knee shall bow and every tongue shall confess that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God. The devil is still just a liar. Shout the devil is a liar. Jesus hates the devil, and so do I. John 8 and 44, he says, your father the devil, and your will is to do the father's desire. He says the devil was a murderer from the beginning, and the devil does not stand in truth, because there is no truth in him. When he lies, he speaks out of his own character or his own identity, for the devil is a liar, and he is the father of lies. Pastor, I know somebody who act like that. That might be their identity now, but it won't be their identity later. That's the devil's identity. Don't take on the, the, the character of the devil. Amen. Amen. Somebody say, victory for my identity. Pastor, what is my identity? Ephesians 1 says, I shared on Tuesday night, that you are blameless. Say, I'm blameless. I'm blameless. Which means you are not, that you are without defect. Or nothing is wrong with you that makes you unworthy to be called God's child. Now, people have problems with that because they're like, I'm not blameless, nor are the people I'm, that are around me blameless. Well, on this year, we're not seen as we see, but we're seen as God sees. God never expects you to be something that he has not already created and made you into being. If God wanted you to breathe underwater, he would have given you gills, like the incredible Mr. Limpet. You don't know nothing about that. Uh, Aquaman. But God has no expectation or declarations that you live like a fish. But he doesn't. That's why he doesn't expect you to do that. But to walk blameless before him, he does. That's, why, that's what he created you to be. Sin, family, is always a choice. Come on, say, sin is always a choice. You don't have to sin. Sin is always a choice. You know, it, I wouldn't sin. I wouldn't sin if this didn't happen. No, you sin because you wanted to sin. And God does not lower his standards because you are struggling. God's grace is there to help us walk blameless before him and not sinful. Amen. Titus 2, 11 and 17 says, For the grace of God that bringeth salvation hath appeared to all men, teaching us denying to deny ungodliness and worldly lusts, that we should live soberly and righteously and godly in this present world, looking for the blessed hope and the glorious appearing of the great God, our Savior, Jesus Christ, who gave himself for us, that he might redeem us from all iniquity. Say, I have been redeemed, have been redeemed from, all from all iniquity. And to purify unto himself a peculiar people, zealous of good works. You would or shouldn't allow your children to bring home D's and F's and say, well, daddy and mama, the teachers don't like me. The chairs are hard. Timmy keeps picking on me. I'm sleepy in class. I just like gym and recess. Or, or you wouldn't or shouldn't say, okay. You should have a standard to say, I know you might be here now, but my, I won't lower my standard. Even if you're struggling, I believe in you that you can get better and you can do better. Amen. 
God doesn't lower his standards because we're struggling. You shouldn't lower your standards for your children because they're struggling. Help them to get better. I know everyone doesn't learn the same, but find out areas where they can be better and cause them to excel in that. God has called all of us to excel in something. Are you with me, family? You don't say I love you and do the best you can. No, you would or should have an expectation that they get the A's, and if they get a B every now and then, you'll say, how can we get that up? My daughter Ray didn't get a B until the last semester of her junior year in high school in honors trigonometry. I got enough D's and E's for my whole family. <laughs> Damn, nobody had to get no D. I got enough D's and E's for them, my grandkids, and everybody else. And I got enough whoopings for it, too. That was back in the old days, y'all. So because I would not apply myself to the lesson. Jesus took all of our sins, past, present, and future. He took the wrath of God for them. He took our whoopings in advance. Pain, shame, and agony, and punishment. Not for us to keep sinning, but to apply ourselves to the lesson of what God says our identity is in him. Our identity is righteousness. Romans 10 and 10 says, with the heart, man believes unto righteousness. It is our faith in him that makes us righteous. It's not work. Say, I'm the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus. If I'm a murderer, I kill people. If I'm a fornicator, I sleep around. If I'm a liar, I lie. But because I'm righteous, I live righteous. Pastor, what if I lie? What about fornicator? Does that mean I'm no longer righteous? If you crawl, does that mean you're a dog? No. You get back up and start walking. Doesn't change your identity. The only thing that changed your identity if you continue to live like that. Now you do. <laughs> you know, okay, okay, Pastor. Wait, Pastor, Pastor, you gotta preach today. Oh, I'm sorry. I'm gonna... I gotta get up because I have to know what my identity is. I can't keep running around like a dog. When I was young, we saw we was to play house. I used to like to be the dog. I want to be the dog. All right, man, you can send he's not here today. They let me be the dog. That's what I wanted to be. All right. But I don't want to be the dog no more. Turn to somebody and say, you don't want to be the dog no more. You want to be the king. Oh, yeah, the Bible says he's made us kings and priests unto our God and Jesus. Are you with me, family? I'm feeling what I'm preaching on today. Tyson Fury, the heavyweight champion of the world was knocked out and even knocked out for a few seconds in the first fight he fought with Deontay Wilder. And people are still astonished how he got back up. But a champion sees himself on the campus and realizes that is not where he belongs. And he will not stay there. He has to get back up. You wonder how he got back up because it shook him. I'm the champion. I'm not supposed to be here. I need some of y'all sometime to shake yourself and say, I'm not supposed to be down here because I'm really a champion, and then champions don't belong on the canvas. Champion belongs at the end of the fight with their hands in the air and waving them like they just don't care. If I got any other champions in here, can you say, oh yeah, oh yeah. yeah. Oh. Yeah. Yeah. Hallelujah. Yeah. We fall down, but we get up. Yeah. The fight in that fight ended in a draw, but the next fight was last Saturday. And there was no doubt that this time Tyson didn't go down. And he decreed a knockout, and it happened. Tyson said, everything that I went through and been through, when I looked at this fight, it wasn't anything compared to what I overcame before I got here. I need some folks here that can testify that what I've been through, what I've been through, what God has brought me through, does not even compare to what the devil trying to throw on me right now. What he brought me out of. What he snatched me out of. What is, does not compare to what the devil's trying to lay on me right now. The devil is still a liar. I know who I am in Christ. Mm. Woo. If you made it this far, if the devil hasn't killed you yet, if you still have your faith, I declare and decree that you're coming out with your hands up. In Ephesians 1, Paul says that not only are you blameless, but you are holy. Everyone says holy. holy. Come on, say I am holy. I am holy. Which means that you were set aside for a purpose. 
Your identity has been set apart for a peculiar or particular work for the King of Kings and the Law Lord of Lords. There is something specific that needs to happen in this generation that you were called and created to do before the world was created that is going to bring good to someone or to something that is going to overcome whatever evil the devil has devised. You, turn to someone and say you, you have been born to do that. You are here to offset the trick and the scheme of Satan, whatever he devised to destroy somebody. God says, I'm going to send you there to make sure that your identity and what I gave you is going to overthrow whatever works that he came up with. The Bible says that Jesus, the reason why he was manifested, was to destroy the works of Satan. That's the reason I showed up. Turn to somebody and say, that's the reason I showed up. Oh, yes, the stuff that he was messing. Maybe, I don't know, maybe your issue was drugs. Maybe your issue was something else. But whatever it was that was holding you, whatever it was that was binding you, the reason why God saved you was to go back to wherever that was and destroy the works of Satan. Turn to somebody and say, I was born for this. I was made for this. Don't have to get paid for this. <laughs> oh, yes. <laughs> but it's all right if you pay me. I appreciate the pay. Thank you. Thank you for paying me for it. But, but I don't have to be paid for it. Hallelujah. Because I was born for it. Hallelujah. I was born to do it. <laughs> I was preaching in my sleep. Parker and I was working at Parker Hanover, I was pushing a, I was pushing a machine down, and I was, <laughs> and everybody thought I was fussing and mad. And Parker said, "Everybody think you're fussing and mad, right?" I said, "No, Parker, I'm preaching, <laughs> I'm preaching." So I walked by one day, Parker did like this. He used to work. He said, he started playing music for me. <laughs> Play for me, boy. <laughs> Jesus is the reason for this. Jesus, I was born for this. Touch somebody and say, I was born to do this. Don't you hate to play or hate the game, somebody? I've been born to do it. <laughs> Did you get mad at me? This is what I was born to do. <laughs> I know I keep you up at night sometimes, but I was born to do it. I know I keep you here a long time sometimes, but I was born to do it. Can't do nothing else. Sometimes I want to throw in the towel. Sometimes I want to give up. But God says, son, you can't do nothing else. You were born to do it. Hallelujah. Sorry, I started preaching to myself. Somebody said, I got victory for my identity. Sit down, I got, I got four minutes, and I'm not going to make it. You are the tool that was created for that purpose. You know, I was putting together a shelving unit. I'm probably just gonna have to stop. I was putting together a shelving unit. Um, you know, um, sometimes, you know, you buy that stuff in the box, you look at the box, and then everything looks, looks so good. And then you have to bring the box home, and everything's like in a million pieces. You're like, what? So I started putting it together and carrying on. And, and you know, I have, I have a lot of tools, Parker. Go ahead, I'm gonna have to just stop. And finish next week. You my TJ today. I had to push that out the way. Y'all ain't finished. Y'all get part two next week. But God stopped me right here. Don't play yet, Parker. I had, I had a, um, I took that box and I, and I started pulling, I started pulling everything apart, trying to put everything together. And, you know, I stuck stuff together, but then I, to get it together, you had to tighten the screw up. And so I went to try to tighten the screws, but I couldn't tighten them. Well, the amazing thing is, prophetess, is that I own a lot of tools. I own a lot of tools. I had, well, I had them before. Somebody starts stealing them, but that's a whole different message. <laughs> I own a lot of tools, so I, I had a, I got a tool bin that you write, you know, with that, yeah, and so I started reaching in and going through all of my screwdrivers and 
all of my Allen wrenches, and I brought them all out, and I tried to, but they wouldn't work. But I wouldn't worry, because I have another case with just all wrenches and all types of um, um, ratchets and stuff. So I said, man, I'm good. And I went in there, and I tried all of them, and none, but I wasn't worried. Because I have another box. And I have like two or three bags of drill bits and all this. And I went into them. And I pulled them all out. And like for over an hour, Lynette, I was trying to find, get the tool to put that thing together. And I couldn't find it. It wouldn't, I said, I didn't spend all this money for this shelving unit. And I can't even put it together. This piece of junk, this raggedy thing, I was mad. I didn't use none of them words that sometimes y'all use in the front row when y'all get mad. But I was angry. So I grabbed the directions. Somebody say he grabbed the directions. Hope I'm talking to somebody on today. I, I, I grabbed the directions. And I say, it's the problem with how I'm putting it together. But if finally it wasn't the problem with how I was putting it together, it was the tool. And I looked in there and I saw that they had provided. And, and I started looking around and I found out that every time I sat down, that I was sitting on. There was only one tool that could put that together. There was only one tool that was designed by the creator to put that together. And when I used the tool, when I took it and put the thing together all at once, it looked like what it was supposed to be. And I'm prophesying to you today, you are that one tool that God created before the foundation of the world to put your family together, to put your neighborhood together, to put your nation together, to put your home together in the name of Jesus. I'm finished. Say I'm that tool. And the problem is, come here, Lawrence. I use my kids for them. The problem is, sit down. Right the problem is, you ain't being used because the devil is sitting on you. And you're the one, too that can get everything together, but the devil is. Like I was sitting on that too. He's just sitting there trying to keep you from, but the devil is a liar. <laughs> because you're gonna come on, throw me up. Throw me off easy, son. <laughs> so rough. Yeah, throw you, you're gonna throw that devil off of you. Throw that monkey off your back. Throw that mess off of you. No longer are you gonna sit on me. I'm the one tool that's needed. I'm looking around for somebody, but I recognize the day it must be me. Oh, 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 shout one more time, it must be me. <laughs> Can't be nobody else, it must be me. <laughs> I, 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 it keeps happening, so it must be me.